J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Where Do I Go From You? <laughs> You know, it's really true that somehow the better a dessert looks, the better it tastes. In fact, that's one of the big reasons why so many people find Jell-O such a marvelous treat. Because there's a world of extra pleasure in eating a dessert that looks as gay and inviting as does Jell-O. Jell-O has a distinctive beauty all its own. There's the rosy pink that reminds you of ripe red strawberries. The bright crimson that makes you think right away of plump, juicy raspberries. As well as all of the other rich, tempting Jell-O colors. And each glowing color is just as attractive. Each grand flavor is just as delightful and refreshing as the juicy ripe fruit itself. So friends, enjoy a shimmering mold of glorious Jell-O right away quick, possibly tomorrow. Ask your grocer for several packages of Jell-O in all of Jell-O's six delicious flavors. But be sure to ask for it by name because Jell-O is a trademark, the property of General Foods. And those big red letters on the box assure you of getting the flavor that made Jell-O famous. played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who, after three hectic weeks in New York, has returned to the simple life in Southern California and resumed his favorite hobby of raising flowers. I love him. A man who may be seen any day in his Beverly Hills garden, hoeing in his hollyhocks, digging in his dahlias, and puttering in his pansies, <laughs> Jack Benny. Thank you. Uh, Jello again. This is a man with the hoe talking. <laughs> and Don, I'm glad uh, you gave me that introduction because it brought out a side of me that most people don't realize. Benny, the nature lover. Well, Jack, I didn't realize it myself until I read in the paper the other day that your petunias had won first prize in the Beverly Hills Flower Show. My petunias? Uh, they only won third prize, Don. They should have come in first, but they weren't trying. <laughs> We're trying. No, they just sat there in their pots and drooped. <laughs> next year, uh, next year, I'm going to enter nasturtium. They may not smell so nice, but they're always in there punching. <laughs> They'll come through. But, Jack, isn't it a lot of trouble for a fellow as busy as you are to keep up a garden? Yes, but it's worth it. Why, my backyard is one of the show places of Southern California, isn't it, Mary? Especially on wash day. I don't mean Monday. I'm talking about my flowers. Oh, they're beautiful. No kidding, Don. People come from miles around just to look at Jack's roses. They sure do. Jack is so sweet about it. Children get in for nothing. <laughs> Mary. Adults a quarter. Now, wait a minute, Mary. That 25 cents admission isn't just for the roses. It also includes a tour of the house and Carmichael's roller skating act. <laughs> Just about pays for the upkeep. I'm not trying to make my backyard commercial. Go on, I fell in your swimming pool the other day and you charged me 15 cents for a towel. That's the standard rate all over the country. <laughs> anyway, I was talking to Don about my flowers. Well, tell me, Jack, uh, what else do you raise in your garden besides petunias and roses? Oh, many varieties, Don. For instance, I have some beautiful Dianthus uh, caryophyllus. Uh, those are carnations. And then I've got some lovely Bocania cordata. Uh, those are gardenias. My goodness, Jack. I'm surprised that you have such a complete knowledge of botany. Oh, I have. For instance, Don, uh, come here a minute. For instance, uh, you wouldn't think to look at a flower that, uh, well, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> it floored me. <laughs> And you know, Don, uh, 
I've been uh, very successful lately experimenting with the improvement of various species of plant life. Is that so? Well, I think it's a shame, Jack, the way you go around telling people you protected a cactus without needles. Well, I did. That cactus in my yard doesn't have a needle on it. It's just as smooth as can be. Sure, you lather it up and shave it every morning. <laughs> I do not, and that's a fine way to talk after the break I've been giving you on flowers lately. Come break. You've been charging me 75 cents a dozen for carnations, and I can get them at the florist for 60. The white ones with the pink edges? <laughs> What are you talking about? Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, kids. What's the topic of conversation? That's topic, Phil. <laughs> and we're uh, discussing flowers, a subject which would hardly intrigue you. In fact, you know nothing about them. Is that so? I love flowers. You love flowers. Certainly. Why, I woke up this morning in a bed of tulips. <laughs> Phil, wherever you fall, that's where you wake up. <laughs> You haven't been interested in flowers since dandelion wine went out. <laughs> and you know it. All right, so what's flowers? You smell them and throw them away. Isn't that awful? Phil, when you come over to my house next Sunday, you'll see the most beautiful garden you ever laid your eyes on. Your house next Sunday? What's going on then? Oh, didn't I tell you? I told Don and Mary before the broadcast. You see, our sponsor, Mr. Mortimer of General Foods, happens to be in town. So I'm throwing a little party for him. Incidentally, Jack, has General Foods picked up your option for next year? My option? Well, doggone, come to think of it, no. He hasn't slept in three weeks and he just found out why. <laughs> Mary, but you know, Don, this party will give me a swell chance to talk business with Mr. Mortimer. Oh, Jack, who do you think you're fooling? That's the only reason you're giving it. Now, wait a minute, Mary. There's no particular rush for me to sign my contract for next season. I'm not worried. Sure, you can always play your violin in Phil's orchestra. <laughs> yeah, I could. Over my dead body. <laughs> Don't be so smart, Phil. And next Sunday, when you come over to my house, you'll be very nice to Mr. Mortimer. Am I invited to your party, Mr. Benny? Why, of course, Dennis. I didn't see you. Why didn't you say something? Nobody would throw me a lead. <laughs> well, I'll throw you a lead, Dennis. Now that you've made your presence known, how about singing a song? Oh, boy, that'll be fun. There he goes again. I wonder what makes that kid so happy. Mr. Mortimer is his uncle. <laughs> he is? Say, that swell. Sing, Dennis. Gee, I didn't know he was related to our sponsor. I might have known it, though. He's such a smart kid. <laughs> night we met and I dreamed of you yet with the wind and the rain in your hair. There in the mist how you sighed when we kissed with the wind and the rain in your hair. The rain was a song, the wind was a voice. The night was dark and stormy, but how could my heart ever be cold with your two arms to warm me? I held you tight as you whispered good night. With the wind and the rain in your hair Now it will be my favorite memory That vision of you standing there Darling, there in the mist how you sighed when we kissed With the wind and the rain in your hair With the wind and the rain in your
Very good. That was the wind and the rain in her hair sung by our own little Dennis Day. Denny, I call him. <laughs> oh, uh, Dennis. Yes, please? You know, uh, that's one of the most beautiful songs you've done this year. The title is so poetic, The Wind and the Rain in Her Hair. I wonder what that girl was doing out in the rain with all that wind in her hair. Well, Jack, I happen to know all about that. The young lady in question was on her way to her neighborhood grocer to buy a package of Jell-O. Oh. When suddenly a storm came up, lightning flashed, and the wind howled and moaned all around her. Our heroine pressed on, undaunted through the driving rain. But she didn't turn back. She wanted Jell-O. Jell-O, do you understand? And she's going to get it. Gee. It grew darker and darker. And through the fury of the storm, you could hear her voice crying. Jell-O. Jell-O. My. My goodness. Well, tell me. <laughs> tell me, Don. Did she get the package of Jell-O with the big red letters on the box? Yes, Jack. And after that, she went to a beauty parlor for a permanent wave. And it made her look so beautiful that she was immediately signed up for pictures. Well. And today, that girl is known to the world as Miss Barbara Stanwyck. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> well, thank you. And if you tune in next week, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Don Wilson, the eminent biographer, will tell the story behind Guess Who? Logan Jerkfinkel. <laughs> now you spoiled it. Get another one ready, Don. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from the sublime to our feature attraction of the evening, tonight, the Benny you requested we'll molest it, players. <laughs> will present their version of that sensational MGM screen masterpiece based on Kenneth Roberts' brilliant novel of American history, that outstanding cinema achievement, Northwest Passage. <laughs> Thank you, Snapdragon. <laughs> That's Sternicum Excelsium. I know what it is. <laughs> Beloin. Now, uh, as you may remember, folks, uh, this Technicolor production starred Spencer Tracy as Major Rogers, the famous explorer and Indian fighter. And Dennis, I've got a big surprise for you. You're going to be the star of our play tonight. You're going to take Spencer Tracy's part. Spencer Tracy? Oh, boy! We'll show your uncle just what you can do. What uncle? Mr. Mortimer, our sponsor. He isn't my uncle. He isn't. <laughs> Darn you, Mary. Well, anyway, Dennis, as I was saying, in our play tonight, you're going to be an Indian guy. <laughs> That's all. An Indian guy? I thought I was going to be the star. You better keep your trap shut or you won't be anything. <laughs> Had just about enough out of you. Here. <laughs> Never mind. Now, um, getting back to our sketch, inasmuch as I am a very dear friend of Spencer Tracy's, I will naturally play his part. It's a fine thing to do to a friend. Listen, Mary, I can handle a part. Why, well, I can do anything Spencer Tracy can do. Except possibly play polo. Make it everything. You'll feel better. Okay. Now, Phil, you're going to play Robert Young's part, the map maker of our expedition. Uh, you're thrown out of Harvard College, so you join my troop of rangers. Well, why would I be thrown out of Harvard? That don't ring true. Phil, the trouble we're going to have is getting you into Harvard. <laughs> the rest will be easy. <laughs> Now, uh, Mary... Yes, please? Hmm. Mary, you're going to play the part of a young girl who, as a child, was captured by the Abernathy Indian. And years later, I save you from this hostile tribe. You're some hero. Well, I am. They're very savage Indians. 
In fact, I almost lose my scalp. What do you care? You got three more hanging in your dressing room. <laughs> All right, now just for that, you might as well tear up that pass I gave you for my rose garden. <laughs> I'm voiding it. <laughs> Now, let's see. Uh, who else? What am I going to be in the play, Jack? Well, Don, you were going to be a ranger, but due to a shortage of actors, I've decided to make you a whole company of rangers. <laughs> so when I call the roll, just answer here 50 times. Do I get more money for playing all those parts? Not unless you got a certain uncle. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. Now, this epic, ladies and gentlemen, will go on immediately after the next number, which will be played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Hit it, boys. Gee, Mr. Benny, why can't I play Spencer Tracy's part? Get away from me, Dennis, or I'll twist your wrist. <laughs> play, Phil. I can't stand an imposter. <laughs> Was loud, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hold on, Jackson. That's the kind of a number you gotta play loud. Phil, you could play low the gentle lark and make it sound like eight vultures on a tin roof fighting over a xylophone. <laughs> and now, folks... Well, that's just silly. Why would vultures fight over a xylophone? They think it's spare ribs. <laughs> Does that clear things up, bruv? <laughs> and now, folks, for our thrilling saga of early American history, Northwest Passage or a Tramp in the Woods. Take it, Mr. Narrator. Ladies and gentlemen, the year is 1712. The scene is Crown Point, located on the Hudson River in the colony of New York. Major Rogers and his famous rangers have decided to wipe out the Abenaki Indians, a hostile tribe who have been ravaging the countryside, burning the farmers' homes, and kidnapping their wives and children. As the scene opens, the Major is addressing his men. Now listen, men, and listen carefully. For years, the Abenaki Indians, a hostile tribe, have been ravaging the countryside, burning the farmers' homes, and kidnapping their wives and children. The man just said that. <laughs> Quiet, you're not in this yet. Now, Rangers, here's my plan. We march northward this very day, northward to Lake Champlain and the Abernathy country. It's a dangerous mission, men, and no one knows how long it'll take. We may be gone weeks, months, perhaps years. Who's going to water your petunias? <laughs> Never mind that. Now, we're all ready to go. But first, are there any objections? Yes, we object. What's the trouble, Company C? Well, half of me have wives and children, and one of me is scared to death. <laughs> I expect mutiny. Well, take a little bicarbonate, and you'll be all set. <laughs> Private Harris, did you draw the map of New York State like I told you to? All but the Hudson River. I can't make a night boat. <laughs> well, this is going to be some trip. Thank goodness we've got an Indian guide. All right, men, we must push on. And we'll wipe out those Abernathy Indians... Or my name ain't... (laughs) 
And so our little band of rangers leave Crown Point and march two full days northward. It is now noon of the third day. Rangers! Halt! I said, Rangers! Put your other foot down. <laughs> what an outfit. Well, this looks like a good place to rest. Where are we, Private Harris? Well, Major, according to my map, that peak just ahead is Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta's in California, 3,000 miles from where we started. We've only been walking two days. Hey, we made good time, didn't we? <laughs> oh, marvelous. Harris, this is the worst map I've ever seen. Well, if you don't like mine, why don't you stop at a gas station and get one? Because there won't be a gas station for 200 years. Automobiles haven't been invented yet. Oh, that's right. I wish I knew where we were. Now, let's... <laughs> Look, fellas, a wild turkey. <laughs> and it nearly hit us. Well, I better ask my Indian guide where we are. Oh, Conkapot. Conkapot. Ugh, please. Where are we? Do you recognize those mountains up ahead? No, I don't. You're a fine Indian guide. Well, I thought I was going to be Spencer Tracy. That was B.M. Before Mortimer. <laughs> oh, well, we'll just have to march on, I guess. But, Major, we can't march anymore today. Several of my backs are sprained and most of my feet are killing me. Your rear guard looks a little tired. <laughs> I guess we'll have to camp here for the night. And careful, men. There's probably Indians lurking behind every bush. Oh, Big Heap! Big Heap! That's Big Heap Major. <laughs> what do you want, Conkapot? Look, Major, white girl. White girl? Where? Oh, yes. Hello! Hello. Hmm. What are you doing in these woods, miss? I was out picking violets and I got lost. Violets, eh? Hey, fellas, look at these vincas kulalati. Ain't they pretty? Yeah, yeah. they sure are. Yeah. Yeah. Now tell me, miss, who are you? My name is Mary and I was captured by the Indians many years ago. Please save me. Now wait a minute. How do I know you're not a spy? How do I know you've been living among the Indians? I didn't get these beads at Magnon's. <laughs> well, I guess you can come along with us. But I warn you, it'll be dangerous. We're on our way to wipe out the Abernathy. It's a hazardous mission. I don't care, just so I can get back among my own people. We will protect you. Come on, men. We better push on. Right, 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 right. Gee, those violets are beautiful. May I carry them, miss? That's all those Indians have to see. <laughs> oh, that's right. Come on, men, on our way. And we'll wipe out those Abernathy Indians, or my name ain't... Two days later. Where are we now, Harris? Do you recognize that lake ahead of us? Well, according to my map, that's a finger bowl at the Brown Derby. <laughs> a lot of help you are. Company! I'm afraid to say halt, they'll start again. <laughs> now cut that out! Do you know where we are, miss? Yes, that's Lake Champlain. There are a lot of Indians around here, but they're all friendly. Good. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> friendly, eh? Then why is this arrow sticking in me? If you look close, it says, I love you on it. <laughs> oh. Hey, Conkapot, pull this arrow out. Okay. Now, listen, men. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> if that's Lake Champlain, we're headed in the right direction. On the opposite shore lies Fort Wentworth. And tomorrow morning at 4 o'clock, before the Indians wake up, we'll cross the lake. All right, men, lay down. Unfold blanket. Company, flee! <laughs> It is 4 a.m. the following morning, and our little band of rangers is sound asleep. 
with the exception of Major Rogers, who was already awakened. Company! Halt! <laughs> now wake up, men. And no one speak above a whisper. The slightest sound will warn the Indians of our presence. <laughs> Turn off that alarm clock! <laughs> All right, men. On your feet and down to the canoe. Remember, not a sound or we're doomed. Shh! Gosh, it's dark. It sure is. Not so loud. Four o'clock in the morning, a fine time to get up. Quiet. Now, everybody behind me, single file. Quiet now. Quiet. Whoop! <laughs> Harris, watch your musket. <laughs> All right, men. Here we are. Now get in your canoe. And we'll wipe out those Abernathy Indians. Or my name ain't... Or my name ain't... Six months later, and we pick up our brave little band of rangers, footsore and weary, somewhere near Lake Champlain. They have been unable to find the Abernakis or Fort Wentworth, and have been without food for eight weeks. In other words, things is bad. <laughs> Cheer up, men. Cheer up. We must have faith and courage. But we're starved, Major. Starved. And I've lost half of my men. Well, on you, it looks good. <laughs> Gee, I'm hungry, too. Here, have a bite of my moccasin. Moccasins are no good without ketchup. <laughs> well, men, you've been brave and loyal soldiers. And I'm afraid this is the end. What's that? Tom Tom, there must be Indians around here. Indians? Raise your muskets, men. Do not be afraid, Major. These Indians are peaceful and friendly. Good. <whistles> Yikes! <laughs> Another bullseye. <laughs> I'm getting pretty sick of this. Look, Major, here comes Big Chief and many braves. Oh, yes. All right, men, put down your muskets. I'll talk to these Indians. How? How? We white men, no want fight. We friendly. We friendly too. No catch em food many moons. Tell me, Chief, which way Fort Wentworth? Fort Wentworth? Yes. I don't know. Hey, Red Brother, which way Fort Wentworth? I don't know. Hey, Thundercloud, which way Fort Wentworth? I don't know. Hey, Geronimo! <laughs> Never mind, let it go! <laughs> we'll find it ourselves! <laughs> Come on, men! Forward! Mark! Here, ladies and gentlemen, is a swell way to help add welcome variety to family meals. Just listen to this. The next time you go to the grocery store, glance at the shelf where you've been used to seeing those familiar red-lettered packages of Jell-O. And there on the same shelf or mighty close by, you'll notice another row of packages also bearing the name Jell-O. These, ladies and gentlemen, are the delicious new Jell-O puddings made by the makers of Jell-O and fast becoming one of the country's favorite desserts. Jell-O, of course, you've enjoyed for many years. You've found a world of pleasure in its grand goodness, its delightful extra-rich flavor, as tempting and refreshing as the juicy ripe fruit itself. And I'm sure you'll get an equally big thrill out of these swell new Jell-O puddings. Jell-O vanilla pudding, Jell-O chocolate pudding, and Jell-O butterscotch pudding. So after this, when you buy Jell-O, Ask for Jell-O puddings, too, and treat yourself to the smooth, luscious, creamy flavor of these marvelous new members of the Jell-O family, Jell-O pudding. We're a little late, so good night, folks. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>